This Plinko feature video will cover customization and refactoring. Link to SQL does not detect database changes. When you want to synchronize your DBML with the database, you must manually delete your outdated entities and drag the updated ones back onto your DBML. And this, of course, has the nasty side effect of losing all your custom changes. Plinko fixes this by not only identifying database changes on regeneration, but also intelligently synchronizing them with custom changes made to your DBML. Plinko also has the great feature providing each entity with a metadata class. This allows for easy customization of your entities. And Plinko also keeps these editable classes in sync with your generated code. So in this video, we're going to be working with a pet shop solution that I just generated using the Plinko Quick Start. And what we're going to do is we're going to make some changes in the database, and then we're going to make some changes in the DBML. We're going to regenerate, and we're going to see how Plinko intelligently merges these two sets of changes. So the first thing we're going to do is add a new column to our account table. We're going to call this address3. And we're going to make it match the other address columns in our database. So if we save this, yep, we're going to update our account table. Now let's go look at our DBML. Oops. And we look at our account table. This was just generated before we made the change, so all we have is address 2 and 3. Now before we regenerate, let's go ahead and rename address 2 to address B. So now we have a set of changes on the client or on the, in the solution, as well as in the SQL Server itself. So all we have to do to regenerate and synchronize these changes is right-click on the CSP and generate outputs. So the update is complete. We need to reload our file that we're looking at here. Yes to all. And if we scroll down and look at our account table, notice that address 3 has been added because Plinko identified that change in the database and brought it into the DBML. But it persisted address B, which has only been renamed in the DBML. So this is how Plinko will intelligently merge any changes you make for your DBML or the SQL Server. It's going to update columns, tables, data types, and all in an intelligent and friendly fashion where all you do is right-click and regenerate. So now let's talk about our metadata classes. Let's go look at the account class here. And notice that this is our front editable file. This is account.cs, so you can make custom changes here and they're going to be persisted during regeneration. However, anything inside the metadata class is going to get updated. Because what's going to happen is that Plinko is going to try to make this metadata class match one-to-one -one the properties on the entity. So account has an account ID, a unique ID. And notice what we did earlier. Account now has an address B in the metadata class in the editable safe file has been updated with that change, as well as... I'm sorry, I missed it. There it is, address 3 has been added as well. So now I want to play with the metadata class and make some changes and regenerate, but let's play with something a little bit smaller and simpler. Let's play with the product class. So again, we're going to come in here and make some changes and see what happens after regeneration. So the first thing I want to do is add a custom method, because again, this is supposed to be a safe class where you can add code and it'll be persisted during regeneration. And so that little custom method there is going to demonstrate that. And then we're going to come down here into the metadata class itself, and we're going to change some stuff up. First of all, we're going to add a new property. And then we're going to remove an attribute. And we're going to add some more attributes. And so what we should see happen here is that when Plinko regenerates, it should identify that I've updated some attributes and persist those changes. So the required attribute should stay gone from category ID, and the two attributes required in UI hint that I've added to the description should be persisted. But it's going to try to synchronize the metadata class with the attributes on the actual product class itself. So delete me should get removed, and let's go ahead and remove an existing property name, and that should get re-added because these are supposed to map one to one. So a quick review before we regenerate here. We have added a custom method that should get persisted. We have added a custom property to the metadata class that should get deleted. We have changed two different properties in the metadata class and updated their attributes, and those should get persisted. And we have deleted one property that should return the name. So if we do our magic right-click and regenerate again, we'll see what happens. So regeneration complete. Let's update the file. And sure enough, everything we expected to happen did. Our custom method was preserved. The delete me 
property is gone, the name property has returned, and all of the attributes that have been updated, such as the category IDs removed required attribute, and the two attributes added to description have been persisted. So let's go ahead and build this and see it in action. And I already have this project open here, so if we just refresh, let's take a look at our account, and we can see that address B has still been renamed, and address 3 is there. And if we come over to our product, and we go ahead and we edit one of these records, you can see the description is now a multi-line text field, and if we delete it, you can see that it is required. So that is how simple regeneration is with Plinko. If you make any updates to the database, again, columns, tables, or data types, when you right-click and regenerate on your CSP, Plinko is going to bring those changes in, intelligently merge them. The metadata classes that are located in each of the editable entity files are going to allow you to customize not only Plinko, which uses this for its rules engine and its auditing, among other things, but it's also going to let you add these attributes for other things to use, such as, in this case, the dynamic data UI. That concludes this feature video over customization and refactoring with Plinko. We hope you found it to be helpful and informative. To watch additional Plinko feature videos, please visit us at Plinko.com. My name is Tom DuPont, and thank you for using Plinko.